things are going on whether you're there or not. It's not like, you know, it's not like this world is about a bunch of things standing around waiting for you to show up and shoot them. Um, the monsters, some of the monsters really dislike some of the other monsters. There's actually sort of a monster ecology going on. Some monsters breed. If you if you take a long time to get through the game, there are going to be a lot more of certain kinds of the, the monsters that are breeding than there would be otherwise. Um, so this is this world is alive. It's not you know one a, a real static world. Now the tentacle monster can't see you. It can only hear you, right? The monsters in Half-Life have different kinds of senses. Some monsters can only see with a certain field of vision. Some monsters can see all around them. Some of them can smell. In other words, they'll follow you around. It's a very vague sense, but they can sort of try to track you down. Uh, in this case, it's a monster that can hear you. Um, so. The ordinary thing that we've all been taught over and over in these games is run as fast as you can and shoot at things as, as, soon, as, you, as soon as you see them. And that's exactly the wrong thing to do in this case. This monster is basically indestructible and it hears you. So if you go in and you sort of move very slowly, it'll sort of know you're there, but when it tries to get you, it'll be really pretty vague. If you start running or start making any sort of noise, firing a weapon, uh, jumping up and down, it'll find you very, very quickly. Um, so we're sort of like playing with people's sense of how these games work and saying, no, you aren't, you aren't always going to be able to kill everything you run into. And in fact, you have to have some thoughtfulness about how you interact with monsters, especially when they're unusual or surprising. The main thing we've done is we've replaced the animation system. Uh, Quake originally has a vertex-based animation system with a few amount of keyframes, and they just move the polygons. Um, the main problem with that is size. Um, to get a lot of animation frames, it's ver vertexes times animation frames, and pretty soon you get half a megabyte um, just to have a few hundred frames. Mm -hmm. uh, we replace all of that with a skeletal-based animation system. So all we have to do is maintain all the bone information. So a monster only has basically maybe 40, 35, 40 bones. Mm -hmm. That's all we save per frame, and all of the rest of the ver vertices are computed on the fly. Mm -hmm. um, what that gives us is not only a dramatic memory footprint savings, um, but it also gives us a much better ability to interpolate smooth motion. The biggest thing about skeletal animation for us is that because all we store is the skeleton movement um, in the animations, we can actually change their bodies dynamically. Um, we ch when the, we have a guy who draws his gun, and all we do is, is when he reaches back for his gun, we replace his holster with a gun, gun in it with an empty holster and a hand with a gun in it. So now, now he has the correct gun. Mm -hmm. We'll have different kinds of weapons on the monster. So we can have a security guard and we can give them all slightly different weapons mm -hmm. um, because it's a replaceable module. The, the, the heads are replaceable. We can keep the bodies. Um, for the player, if you put on armor, we can replace the body portion of you or just your chest all of your animation sequences still work, mm -hmm. um, except we just get a lot more mileage out of the same stuff. <laughs>